Oh, Detectron 2. It is pretty interesting framework. People either love it or hate it. And I will be honest with you guys, I'm in the love team. I use it for like four years right now. I used it uh, for job projects. I use it in my free time. I use it for Kaggle competitions. So whenever I need to do image segmentation, even right now when Yolo V5 introduced image segmentation, which by the way, we have uh, recorded a video about it, I still will use the Tektron 2 over Yolo V5 personally. But people don't like the Tektron 2 because it's complicated. This is certainly the type of framework slash library that when you use it, you need to have open tab with documentation for that library. And it is because it's written completely differently than I guess any other YOLO-ish framework that you use. Usually those frameworks have like single script that you run. Over here, you need to write your script using parts that are accessible within the Tektron 2 library. So my job today is basically to give you a good starting point. This initial Jupyter notebook that you can use and build on top of. I hope that you will like it as much as I like it. So we jump straight into our Google Colab that we'll use to run our demo project. We start by connecting the Jupyter notebook into the Python environment. Confirm that we are not robots as usually. And the first thing that we will do is actually confirm that we have access to the GPU. And sure, we have it. And we can now install the actual Detectron 2 library. And it will take a little bit of time for sure. Now we can make sure that everything has installed properly and to do it, we'll run the first cell over here that basically is here to print out all the versions of all the things that we are using. So Torch, Detectron 2, CUDA, everything is uh, printed out in a single cell so that we can confirm that our environment is configured properly. And next thing is to actually import all utilities from the Tektron 2 that we are using in our today's tutorial. This is what I was talking about. How many different things do you need to import to run the simple train and inference script? I think that it is a, always a good practice to actually run the pre-trained model on some example image and confirm that everything has been installed and configured uh, as it should be. So what we are doing is we are picking one image from Coco data set and loading our uh, pre-trained model into the memory uh, just to make sure that everything will uh, run smoothly later on. And after a few seconds, we have the inference result, which we can print out over here. By the way, the Tektron 2 has this concept of uh, instant you can think about it as detections, basically, and things that are pretty cool that you can actually filter instances uh, by class or by score, and it's really easy and, you know, the notation is quite similar to something like pandas, for example. Right now we can use those instances to actually visualize stuff on the image. If we take a closer look over here, we see that we actually use one of the Tektron's two classes uh, called Visualizer uh, that takes image and instances and a little bit of metadata about the data set and is capable of drawing uh, results of our inference on a given image. And I don't want to open documentation once again, but, but you get the point, you know. If you want to use it on your own, you most likely need to open documentation to understand how it works. Now is the time to actually work on our custom model. And if you want to have custom model, you need to have custom data set. So for this tutorial, we'll actually use football pitch segmentation data set that I created as a part of a Kaggle competition that I participated not so far ago. And we will right now load it into RoboFlow universe and uh, do a little bit of magic and then use it internally in that particular call-up. We go to RoboFlow.com, sign in, create new project. Uh, we select uh, instance segmentation and create public project. I uh, export the data set from Kaggle and right now I can just select the folder and uh, RoboFlow is basically loading the images and the annotations. So if you look quite carefully over here, um, you would see that we have uh, the uh, polygons drawn on the football pitch. 
we can now save and continue. So those uh, images were just loaded locally in the browser and right now they are being sent to server. We can now uh, approve or reject image based on the quality on, of the annotations. In our case, you know, the data set has been already used uh, previously, so we will most likely approve all of them, but the editor allows you to edit the annotations and to completely reject them if they are not the highest quality. So in our case, we just approve all and add approved to data set. Now we can split the data set into train, uh, validate and test parts and we just keep the default 70, 20 and 10. And at the very end we need to generate the new version. Ah, and there is one more step which is post-processing and the augmentation. So in the post-processing part I guess I will only resize the images. So I will use 800 by 800 and fill it with the black background. And for the augmentation, I will do flipping, but only horizontal because, you know, in the case of football pitch, it doesn't really make sense to flip it vertically and do a little bit of uh, saturation variation and a little bit of exposure variation. And I guess that's it. Yeah, we can continue. As a result, we'll have like three times more images than originally. So right now we need to give Reboflow a little bit of time to process all of those instructions that we provided, but we will see the result in just a few seconds. And there you have it. What we can do right now is export the data set in Coco segmentation format and use it inside our Jupyter notebook. So now we can just copy that snippet and paste Okay, 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 we need to solve another puzzle. And the fire hydrant is here, I guess. Okay, cool. And now we can just paste it in the notebook over here, run the cell, and download the data set from Roboflow universe. The more I think about it, the more I am certain that that sign is actually incorrect. Even your parents shouldn't know your API key. In the meantime, we actually finished downloading the data set and we can actually go ahead and register it. So in the Tektron 2, there is the concept of registering the data set so that later on is accessible to other parts of the framework. And that's what we are doing over here. So we need to provide the path to the images and to annotation JSON and the name of the data set that we would like to register. Register. And at the very end, we can confirm that registration was successful and we see that we have a football pitch segmentation data set train, test and validate parts. Just to be safe, we can now visualize one image from the data set, make sure that everything has loaded properly and it looks like it. We have all the annotations visualized properly. We have crossing player zones, cross recipient zone and the general pitch. Before we start training, we need to select the hyperparameters and generally speaking, the configuration of the model. So the Tektron 2 offers few architectures that we can choose from and you specify which architecture you would like to use by pointing to specific YAML configuration. Those YAML files can be found in the Tektron 2 repository under configs directory. So you can see all the possible uh, choices that you have, including the ones that we will uh, most likely use. So in our case, we have three classes and we will set the max iteration count to let's say 2000 load the config this method basically loads the basic config and you can change values of some specific properties so like in our case we select maskar cnn with uh, fpn backbone we are also loading the checkpoint from the yaml file and we are uh, specifying that we would like to use our train data set for training our, our test data set for testing and the output directory so all of those things that you need to specify and for example in case of yolo v5 you do it via script arguments over here you need to specify that within the configuration of the model 
And the last part is to actually start the training itself. So we just run that cell and now we just need to wait a little bit of time for the model to train. No, don't worry, I will not make you sit through the whole training, we'll just cut. Looks like the training is done, and now we can reload TensorBoard and actually see how the model behaved through the training in the interactive TensorBoard. It's pretty cool that you can actually use it inside Google Colab with the Tektron 2. It takes a little bit of time to load everything, but I guess right now we see most of the stuff. Mostly we are interested in total loss. After initial progress, the model essentially flattened at the very end, but that is something that we should definitely expect. So now we can test our model. So we can load it back into the memory and run it on validation set basically to confirm that it works as expected and we can see that you know the crossing player zone and crossing recipient zones are being detected quite well and there you have it the tektron 2 and i guess somewhere around 10 minutes uh, i hope that right now you feel uh, much stronger you will go over there in the documentation look for other cool features that you can use in your scripts to uh, enhance your uh, training uh, and detection capabilities and if you think that we've done a good job over here uh, let us know know about it uh, in comments uh, leave the thumbs up leave the sub so you will not miss the next uh, video we are planning to make uh, uh, yolo x yolo v7 uh, those things are certainly in the pipeline coming soon my name is peter and i see you guys next time bye